Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're here for the long-awaited pumping 101 video. All right, so let's get the essentials. Got my notes. Gonna crack a bubbly, sparkling water. And we're good to go. All right, you guys, so lots of you have been asking for this video and i'm really excited to finally give you what you've been waiting for um i have been collecting information for the past like six weeks or so on like what my pumping schedule is um what my output is usually like how often i pump the times i pump um and then how much i pump overall how to boost my supply etc i have it all for you written out on a piece of paper so let's hop on into the info i am going to break this video up into three main segments for you guys the first thing that i'm going to talk to you guys about today is my schedule and my output second thing i'm going to talk about are my pump parts and my pump itself um pumps i should say because i use more than one the third thing I'm going to talk to you guys about today are the supplements that I use as well as what I eat while I'm breastfeeding in general. Okay, so on a typical day, I have been tracking now for the past four weeks. Um, I am 12 weeks postpartum as of this upcoming Saturday, so in just a few days, and I've been exclusively pumping for just about six weeks. Every once in a while, I can sneak in um, a nighttime nursing session if he's feeling like it. It really just depends on um, how he's feeling. A lot of times he will refuse the breast, but um, I find that if he's really sleepy, really tired, um, he does like to nurse. So I try to push for at least that one nursing session, but I would say 75% of the time he refuses it. So my schedule for breast pumping, um, right now I'm working. So as soon as I get up in the morning, right around 6 a.m., I will pump. Now this is my biggest pump of the day, and I can get anywhere from like seven to eight ounces, sometimes as little as like six ounces, um, depending on how much I ate and drank the day before. But on a normal day, I would say about seven ounces. And then I will pump again as soon as I get to work, right around 8.30 or nine o'clock, right as soon as I'm settled. Um, I will bust the pump out at my work, and the pump that I use at work is the Medela pump pump on uh, the Medela in style pump which comes in a bag for you um, so I will pump there with that at 9 a.m. 11 a.m. 1 p.m. 3 p.m. and then I won't pump again until I get home right around 6 6 30 and my um, last pump of the night is usually right around 9 30 if he doesn't nurse instead at that 9 9 30 session so with each um, pumping session I will start out producing a ton, so like seven ounces, four ounces, four ounces, three ounces, two ounces, two ounces, two ounces, two ounces for the rest of the day. I will average right around 22 to 24 ounces a day. Now when I was first pumping, um, I just switched over from breastfeeding and I was struggling with a little bit of a milk supply issue. I was only producing right around 18 ounces when I first started pumping. Um, between all of the supplements and drinking enough water and making sure that I was eating enough calories, I got myself up to right around 24 ounces a day, sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less, just depending on um, like how my body is fluctuating for that day. So Riker, we feed him on demand and our daycare provider feeds him on demand as well. So if he's crying, we'll go through the list and usually, you know, making sure that he's fed is one of the first things. He's really not a fussy baby. So usually if he's crying, it's because he is either hungry, he has gas, or he has a um, wet or dirty bum. So um, we feed on demand and when he does feed, he will have right around four ounces per bottle um, and he will drink right around 24 to um, 34 ounces a day, uh, just depending on his mood. If he is going through a mental leap, which I'll leave links down below for that information, um, if he's going through a leap, he will tend to be on the more of like the 34 ounce side. If he is um, on a normal day, it's right around 24 to 28 ounces. So right now he is sleeping through the night. I have really good news for you guys. I've been trying some things out to get him to sleep through the night. So stay tuned for that in the very near future. Um, I'm going to share with you kind of how we did that. 
So he will have his last nighttime feeding and then we swaddle him up and then he goes to bed and he sleeps through the night and then he'll wake up right around 6, 7 a.m. Right as soon as I'm done with my first morning pump is as soon as, it's so usually like when he wakes up. Um, some days if I'm not producing enough, so if he's having that like crazy 35 ounce day, um, those are the days that we will supplement with formula. And I've shared with you guys in the past that I do supplement with formula um, as needed. And our favorite is the Enfamil Neuro Pro Gentiles, and it has been um, working really well for him and for his little tummy. Okay, so kind of moving into the pumps that I use. So the first pump that I use, I want to show you guys. Um, I have it sitting right here next to me, and that is the Spectra S2. And um, it is a very easy pump to use. I love the suction on it, and the phalanges are a lot more comfortable, and um, I feel like the bottles are easier to clean because they are bigger bottles compared to the Medela, and I will show you what the Medela bottle looks like here in a second. I do not have my Medela pump on me, but I will insert a photo right here of what that Medela install pump looks like. I do keep that at my office, and um, it does function a little bit differently compared to my Spectra. So I just really quickly, I'm not gonna go into like a really in-depth um, how to use your Spectra, but in general, I'll insert a clip here. When I start my pumping session, I will immediately, because as soon as it turns on, it wants to go back into the regular pumping. Uh, so you're going to want to switch it back to the letdown. So that button that I'm pointing to or that I pointed to, that is the letdown button. Once the letdown button has been activated, you'll see a little symbol in the corner of your screen, like little squiggle marks showing you that it is in letdown mode. Now generally, um, when you're in letdown mode, that is going to be for about two minutes. And this pump does not automatically kick out of letdown mode. You have to manually push the letdown button again once your milk starts to flow and then it will go into the regular um, suction mode so sorry about the background noise here my husband is setting up a grill in the background um, with the pump what I will do is I will just I leave it at I leave it at its normal settings so I will do a level 5 suction or vacuum um, and I believe the cycle is 70 when I'm in letdown. Now when I switch over to the regular vacuum mode, um, I'm at a level 12 right away, and I believe it's a 54 cycle, um, and I just leave it at that the entire time. That's what works really well for my body. Um, I have experimented with the other modes. I don't entirely understand it um, as far as like the cycles, but um, as far as like the, the suction level, um, I used to start out, you know, after the level five when I was doing the letdown mode, then I would switch to like a level eight, then to a 10, and then to a 12. I would work my way up. But now that I have gotten more used to pumping, um, I just go directly from the letdown mode at level five up to level 12. So I hope that helps you guys. Um, another really important tip with your breast pump is you wanna make sure that the phalanges fit you. So this is a 24 millimeter and um, I actually fluctuate. There are days where I need the 28 millimeter because mama's nipples are really stretched out. That like not what you want to hear but make sure that the phalanges are the correct size for you it can have a huge effect on how much milk you um, are pumping another really important tip when it comes to your breast pump and maintaining it is um, these parts in here need to be replaced every so often so these duckbill valves on the inside of the spectra pump these need to be replaced every three to four weeks now I generally just go off of um, I can like it makes a really funny sound when um, it's going it makes like a <laughs> makes like a you can almost tell it's not getting enough suction or like some air is coming through um, and another way to tell is this like little valve here will be stuck open that's when you need to um, replace it and I just get my replacement parts on Amazon. I'll have everything linked down below for you guys, um, as well as my Amazon store. So I have an Amazon storefront where I have all of my breastfeeding favorites and breast pump essentials. So the Spectra is what I use at home and I will use this for my first morning pump, as soon as I get home pump, and my last night pump. Now, the majority of the day I am using my Medela InStyle pump. And now this pump is completely different than the Spectra S2. I feel like the suction is a little bit stronger and can go higher than the Spectra. Um, it goes a little too high for my comfort, so I just adjust it to where it's comfortable. Now, when the Medela InStyle first turns on, it's going to turn on into an automatic letdown mode. So versus the Spectra, you're having to manually put it in the letdown mode and manually take it off of letdown mode. 
The Medela install pump is going to automatically, for two minutes I believe it is, um, put you into letdown mode in the beginning. So when you put your um, phalanges on, just make sure that when you turn the dial up, it's gonna go really fast at first. Um, just make sure that the suction is um, the highest comfortable setting for you. Um, and it's a little dial on there that you turn up and like I said, it just automatically will go into letdown mode and automatically go into regular vacuum mode. So what I use when I'm pumping um, is I will use a hands-free pumping bra and I wear this every single day. And it is a combination nursing and pumping bra. Um, I will leave one of my Amazon favorites down below. Otherwise, I really do enjoy the Ollie Gray nursing bras. Those ones, are, those ones are a little bit more expensive, but they're also cuter and they're also a bit higher quality. Um, so if you know that you're gonna be um, breastfeeding and pumping for a long time, it would be really nice to invest in some nicer bras, but then also have some cheaper ones to have on hand. I'm just wearing a cheaper one right now. It's just like a black $20 Amazon pumping bra, but I really do enjoy it. All right, so real quick, I do at least have the um, one of the Medela bottles with me. So this is what a Medela bottle looks like compared to a um, a Spectra bottle, very, very different. So this has a five ounce capacity, but so does this, which is kind of crazy because it looks like this is so much bigger. Um, what's nice about the Spectra bottles, I'll open it here. Um, sorry, it's a little wet. I just got done using it and I washed it out. So um, if you look at, let me take the cap off here. So this is a lot easier. The Spectra bottle is a lot easier to get one of those bottle brushes into and to really clean it out versus this one I've found, like I'm just using an Ikea bottle brush or like a whatever, an Ikea like dish brush right now, but it's a lot harder to get it into this tiny little hole versus this one. And it might sound silly, but like it is such a, like it's such a big deal. When you're having to clean your pump parts like seven, eight times a day, like the easier the better so i do really like the spectra bottles for cleaning these ones are a little bit more of a pain in the butt so i wanted to mention if you ever need um replacement parts for the medela pump now the, the medela is a little bit different um also in regards to like their valves the spectra has this little duck valve um duck bill valve and then um the medela pump has more of like a flap valve um you can find replacement parts for that on amazon like i've bought um, replacement tubing for mine on Amazon, but you can find a lot of the pump parts at Target. Target does carry Medela and they do carry the Medela, Medela bottles too. I've really highly considered like going and getting new bottles just because um, the Medela pump is what I got with my first pregnancy and um, the bottles are, are in great shape. I just would like more of them or maybe more of like a higher capacity than five ounces, but um, anyways, but they do sell all of the replacement parts at Target for Medela, which is super nice, um, which rolling into Medela parts and things. So when I, um, when I am done pumping, I will wash my parts right away in really hot soapy water, and then I will put them directly into one of these um, Medela sanitization bags. You don't need to sanitize every single time. I'm just a little extra precautious. I put them in here and then I put them in the microwave um, according to the instructions on the back. And each of these bags has 20 uses. So um, one of these will typically last me a whole week at home and a whole week at the office. So these Medela bags you can pick up at Amazon, pick up on Amazon or you can pick it up at Target. They have them at both places. I um, mean, I've gotten them from both places. I'll leave an Amazon link to these down below. So if you wanna snake some up, you can. I believe these are really affordable. I believe that there's like 100 uses per box which is like five bags and there's 20 uses per bag. Moving on to like my breast milk storage products and what I do for that. So if I have leftover milk um, that I need to store and I know that I don't need to freeze it, then I will put them in or I will put the milk in to um, one of these Medela bottles because they cover, come with covers and I'll just put that directly in the fridge until he's ready for his next feeding. So, and I've got a couple of these and two of these has gotten me by just fine. Now, if I want to freeze my milk, so if I'm gonna be um, freezing the milk to bring the daycare the next day, um, and while I'm at work, what I use are these Medela milk storage bags. Um, I just write his name, the date, and how many ounces. Now, um, say I only produce like 2.75 ounces. I like to get these bags full of like 
four ounce servings. So if I only produce like 2.75 ounces one time, I'll make sure that I add 1.25 for my next pumping session to make sure that it's right around four ounces or at four ounces. So, um, so yeah, so typically I will put four ounce servings into these bags and then um, I do lay them flat to freeze them. It will typically produce like three or four servings for him while I'm at work for the day, which is plenty to get him through his next day at daycare. So then I just swap him out in the morning. Each day I pick him up, I ask her if she has any left, and then um, I will bring her more the next morning in a little cooler bag, and then we swap it out and we repeat the process. All right, so the next topic of this video is going to be a lengthy one, but a very important and very exciting one. So this is the supplements and what I eat portion of this video. Now, um, when I was struggling with my milk supply in the beginning of pumping, I went through all of the supplements and um, a lot of like those blends out there, I really just found the main ingredient in each blend and um, decided to take them separately so I could weed out which ones worked for me and which ones didn't. Now, this is the narrowed down list of work, what worked for me and um, not saying that this would necessarily work for you, but this is what has worked for me to increase my supply from about 18 ounces a day to 24 ounces a day. And 24 ounces a day is much more sustainable for um, providing for your baby. Um, like I said, sometimes Riker does eat more than that, um, but, and that's okay. That's okay if he's like cluster feeding one day um, more so than the last. Now, excuse me if I'm looking down a lot. This is a lot of information and I want to make sure that I'm getting through it efficiently, but also um, very like detailed and informative. So um, what I take each day um, for supplements, I will take two pills of fenugreek three times a day, and that's purely just for um, milk supply. And then I take um, two teaspoons of the magnesium calm drink every single night. I take three pills of coconut oil every single day, and then I take a prenatal. And then for breakfast every single morning, I drink what I call um, a booby protein shake. So in my booby protein shake, I will put a scoop of chocolate um, protein powder. Right now I'm using Shakeology. It doesn't need to be Shakeology. You can use whatever brand of protein powder that you prefer. Um, I will do a scoop of chocolate protein powder, and then I do a tablespoon of brewer's yeast, a tablespoon of flaxseed, a teaspoon of cinnamon, a handful of ice, and then um, two cups of the Starbucks um, like cold coffee that you can get from like Walmart, Target, your local grocery store. And then I also do a half a cup of unsweetened vanilla almond milk. Now, this is my breakfast every single day. I really enjoy it. It's very like nutty and like almost tastes like a cinnamon roll, um, like a chocolate cinnamon roll. It's really good and it's a tiny bit bitter just because you put the brewer's yeast in there. Um, but I have really been enjoying it and I feel like it has really helped um, build my supply and maintain my supply. And then in addition to all of the supplements, which I will get into the benefits of those supplements here in a second, um, I want to first off say that I am not a medical professional in any way and this is just what's worked for me. And you guys know that I just love to share my tips with you. So um, always make sure that you're checking with your doctor first, your physician first before you try any of these supplements. I worked hand in hand with my lactation consultant pretty closely to make sure that everything I was taking was good for baby or was okay for baby. So before we hop into the rest of it, I just had to um, tell you guys that disclaimer. When it comes to your water consumption, water is so important when you are breastfeeding and when you're pregnant and in general. So a an average person needs eight, eight ounce glasses of water per day. Now when you're pregnant and breastfeeding, that is going to increase quite a bit. When you're pregnant and breastfeeding, you need 32 ounces extra of water a day. That's four additional glasses a day. Now, the way that I make sure that I get my water in, simple enough, is I pump seven to eight times a day, so I just make sure that I have an eight ounce glass of water at least during my 30 minute pumping session. So I make sure that I have at least eight ounces of water in my 20 to 30 minute um, pumping session. And then to get the extra water, I just make sure that I have a glass of water in between every other pumping session. That will equate to the full 32 ounces additional that you need. In total, you need 96 ounces of water a day to keep your supply up and to give your body the water that it needs. Okay, so getting into the benefits of those supplements that I take. 
Um, the first thing I'm gonna start out with is coconut oil. Now I have mentioned in two of my videos now why I take coconut oil and why I don't consume it um, as far as like cooking with it and it's just because it's a taste thing. I do prefer to consume the unrefined, cold pressed, um, keto friendly uh, coconut oil, which all coconut oil should be keto friendly. My bottle of pills just says that. Um, but the unrefined tastes much more like coconut oil than the refined. So, and I don't like the refined just for personal reasons, but anyways, um, moving into the benefits of coconut oil, you guys are gonna be blown away. I was blown away when I first found out about the benefits and um, I, I had initially wanted to do coconut oil um, just to help boost my supply because I had seen on one of my mama groups that um, the coconut oil had really helped somebody else boost their supply. So, um, but then I found that there's way more benefits to um, consuming coconut oil in your diet while you're breastfeeding or pumping. Um, so coconut oil has antimicrobial properties that sink into the bloodstream and transfer to the baby via the breast milk. So mamas who ingest or topically apply um, coconut oil um, are going to make their breast milk better by strengthening its antimicrobial properties. Um, and then the breast milk with increased antimicrobial properties will protect your baby even more against viruses and bacteria. That's incredible. Especially if you're having a baby during cold and flu season, anything that you can do to prevent the baby from getting sick, awesome. So um, like I mentioned too, the coconut oil does have um, breast milk boosting um, properties. Some women see a boost, some women don't. Um, I'm not sure if I necessarily did. I wouldn't say like a ton if that was the case. But the other benefits have um, really convinced me to continue um, taking it. But moving on to magnesium. Magnesium is so important for your body. I could go on and on about magnesium all day, but I don't want to bore you guys. Um, but just to start out with, when you are pregnant and breastfeeding, you need 20% more magnesium than the average person. And again, magnesium does so much within your body. Just Google magnesium benefits and how it affects your body. It's, it's awesome. Um, I will leave a link down below to where I got my information for um, this little excerpt. Your needs will increase during gestation and lactation. There has been some research that shows that it may help with DNA formation and is thought to play a role in preventing complications such as preeclampsia and gestational diabetes. I did take this supplement when I was pregnant as well and I it was negative for both preeclampsia and gestational diabetes. Now, I don't know if that's necessarily because I was taking the magnesium calm supplement, probably not, I don't, I don't really know. Um, but I was taking that during pregnancy as well. Magnesium also plays a significant role in hydration, muscle relaxation, energy production, and the deactivation of adrenaline. Now the reason why that is so important is because adrenaline is a stress hormone, and I'm sure you ladies have heard, if you're stressed out, your production is going to drop. Um, so if you are consuming enough magnesium in your diet, that will help you to stay calm, hence why the supplement is called Calm Magnesium or Magnesium calm so again adrenaline is a stress hormone which can interfere interfere with production and letdown of milk um, magnesium is also not made in the body we have to consume magnesium which we can eat um, foods that contain magnesium now the only issue with this is that um, so many of us don't consume enough magnesium the way that it is it's very hard to get enough magnesium from your diet I am a firm believer in um, eating over taking pills, but in this case, um, especially because I need 20% more, I am just making sure that I'm taking that supplement um, to fill in that hole. So again, it's not made in the body, so breastfeeding babies are getting solely all of their magnesium from you, mama. So if your baby um, is having issues falling asleep or staying asleep or like wakes up in like fits, it has been shown in some studies that if the mom increases the amount of magnesium that she's consuming, um, that will transfer directly to baby and stabilize the magnesium levels in baby and can help them sleep longer. Again, I'm not a medical professional. This is just something I'm, these are, this is just information that I have found on um, some informational and medical sites. I'll leave it down below for you guys. But 
Um, maybe that's why Riker's now starting to sleep through the night because I started taking that magnesium. I don't know, probably not me, I don't know, who knows. Also, getting into just a little supplement for breastfeeding babies, um, Riker does have vitamin D drops that he takes every single day um, because he is breastfeeding. So when you're breastfeeding, I'm sure you guys were told in the hospital that baby needs to have um, vitamin D supplementation just because our bodies don't produce vitamin D. We get that from the sun um, and then, you know, be a supplementation form. So, um, especially where I'm from, when it's winter nine months out of the year, uh, vitamin D is very important for us to have in our diet as far as like pills. So, let's get into how I eat. I get a lot of questions about that. So, as of this morning, I'm officially down 53 pounds since having Riker. I've only gained 42 with him. Um, my weight loss had kind of plateaued if you will right around weeks like 9 10 gained a couple back because I was pigging out and I was breastfeeding and I was starving and then I reintroduced myself into keto <laughs> I was keto when I conceived Riker and I was keto for the first half of my pregnancy again check with your doctor before you do anything drastic I'm not a medical professional I know I keep having to say that but it's so important for you guys to check with your doctors before you try any of the information that I'm giving you um, but along with my doctor I was doing keto um, during my pregnancy and I I really feel like it was a big contributor in um, me conceiving Riker so anyways I switched back to keto again you guys I always go back to keto when I need to drop the weight I want to get myself back into a healthy BMI but I didn't want to sacrifice my milk supply so a lot of what I was reading was telling me that my milk supply would stay as long as I was consuming enough calories and even though you're consuming 2,000 calories a day, 1,800, 2,000 calories, whatever your body needs while you're breastfeeding, um, if you kick the carbs down, you're still going to lose weight. And that has proven true for me. I feel like I've really been losing weight um, really fast. In fact, in the past couple days, I had lost all the weight that I gained again. So I had lost additional 10, gained probably six of it back. I've lost six in like two days now. What's really interesting is that um, having a low carb, high fat diet like keto, um, so that's like right around 50 to 80 net carbs a day while you are breastfeeding. Some people will kick it down to zero when they're um, not pregnant or breastfeeding but you do need some carbohydrates when you are breastfeeding because um, when you breastfeed you lose 30 grams of sugar um, per day in the breast milk so you do need some carbs at least 50 a day is what I was reading so I keep it right around 50 to 75 newborns are born into ketosis and they remain in this normal healthy state um, which is crazy while they're breastfeeding so milk is also made up of 50 to 60 percent fat and the amount of cholesterol that is in breast milk is six times higher than what the average adult consumes so having a high fat diet is going to improve the quality of your breast milk and make it fattier and better for baby. Again, you can lose weight while still consuming 2,000 calories a day, getting you know your fill of food so that your breast milk isn't dropping, um, and just make sure that you're getting a lot of high quality fats into there and you're getting um, enough nutrients, enough electrolytes, and getting enough fiber and vegetables. Just a couple of really quick things here at the end that I wanted to mention to you guys. Um, my favorite manual pump is the Haka. I have a video on that that I will link up here for you guys. Um, I used the Haka when I was breastfeeding and I will use it once in a while when I don't have my actual pumps on me if I just need to um, release some pressure if you will. Um, but yes, highly recommend the Haka. My favorite bottle warmer, I shouldn't even say my favorite, it's just what we have left over from Kaya. It's just a munchkin bottle warmer and I'll also link that down below for you guys. Um, my favorite bottles are the Komotomos, those are my number one. Number two I would say um, are the Avent Natural bottles and number three are the um, Dr. Brown's bottles. Now the Avent Natural and the um, Dr. Brown's bottles are what we used with Kaya. This time I'm primarily using Komotomos with Riker. Last but not least, alcohol and breastfeeding. I get a lot of questions on this. I'm not gonna go into depth on this. I don't feel like I'm a, an expert in any way. I just am gonna leave a link down below for you guys to kellymom.com um, telling you like all of the ins and the outs of having a glass of wine once in a while um, while you're breastfeeding. 
So, and if you're really paranoid, you can get the alcohol milk test strips. I did have to do this one time because we had family in town and we were celebrating and I had a few glasses of wine. Um, yeah, so I'll leave a link to those down below as well, just in case um, you had an extra fun night. <laughs> All right, you guys, that is going to wrap it up for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a long one and it was packed full of information. Um, if you have any additional questions in regards to exclusively pumping or breastfeeding, leave them in the comments down below. Make sure that you are subscribed to my channel before you leave and you hit that bell notification so that you don't miss out on any of my other future videos. If you guys are new here, welcome. I do a lot of the day in the life videos of like being a mom, being a working mom, 24 hours with a baby, Maybe what have you and then I'm gonna be sharing a lot of my um, postpartum weight loss here with you guys over the next year really excited to share um, more recipe videos and fun things like that so stay tuned all right you guys I will see you on Sunday for another day in the life video okay bye you guys what a wonderful world